Unlock your dream property with Meeks Realty Group, where Rich the Realtor makes real estate dreams a reality. Whether it's residential or commercial, we've got Charleston to Huntington covered. Your key to exceptional real estate experiences start here. Meeks Realty Group. Contact us at meeks.us. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 580 WCHS, its employees, or WVRC Media. From the studios of WVRC Media, the country, the United States of America, the state, West Virginia, the city, Charleston. This is the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live. And your host. What we've got here is failure to communicate. He's kind of a big deal. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble. Dave Allen. Have a good Monday morning to you. Welcome to the show. Ryan Nicholson is our producer today. Bigly, Piggly, Wiggly Hotline. 304-345-5858 304-345-5858 Fruits Pharmacy Text 304-935-5008 The Dave Allen Show and 580 Live comes to you from the Parmar Store Studio There's not a Parmar Store near you now that will be soon Parmar again fueling the Adelphia Summer Concert Series Marietta, Ohio only a 90 minute drive from downtown Charleston Listen to this lineup This is throughout the summer and into the fall The Wallflowers, Struggle Jennings, Uncle Cracker The Pop 2000 Tour featuring members of some of the hottest boy bands of all time plus Ace Fraley of Kiss, Stephen Adler of Guns N' Roses, Marty Stewart, Leroy Parnell, rap and hip-hop legend Exhibit, Young Jock, Bubba Sparks, and more. Visit theadelphia.com for more. And remember, if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Evan Dave Allen, Show and 580 Live, brought to you by Thornhill Auto Group, including the all-new Thornhill CDJR. On the Thornhill Motor Mile, experience the power of the 2024 Ram 1500, up to $4,500 available retail consumer cash. On select Bighorn models, most qualified through Chrysler Capital. See Thornhill for all the details. Visit thornhillcdjr.com or in person on US 119 in Logan today. Welcome to the show. Loaded up this morning uh, to kick off the week. Uh, a week where I'm going to be away for two days this week. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later on. Uh, no Mayor Goodwin today for her normal first Monday of the month visit. Her chief of staff, though, Matt Goodwin, uh, or Matt, Matt Sutton, I should say, is here today. We're also going to be joined by former Mayor Danny Jones. I asked Danny to come in to weigh in on the death of former Charleston Mayor uh, Hutchinson. That was was uh, announced over the last couple of days. Danny will be weighing on uh, that, uh, weighing in on that. Uh, we're also going to ask Matt to stick around to answer any questions or concerns you have about anything relating to the city of Charleston. The uh, big news from the weekend uh, actually happened on Friday was the party switch by Senator Joe Manchin. He announced that publicly on Friday he's switching his party from uh, Democrat to Independent. Not coincidentally. On the final day, one can switch their party to try to run for office in the November general election. Interesting to get Danny to weigh in on that, too. Plus, you know I love to talk about food. There's a new food truck in the area, but this one's a little bit different. Heather Hardman from Trojan Landing Marine is the one in charge of it. She's going to be stopping by as well. Plus, as I said, your phone calls and texts are welcome to Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline 304-345-5858. Fruit Pharmacy text 304-935-5008. want to welcome to the show now the newest member of the Kanawha County Commission. He was named to that post on Thursday by the other two commissioners, Commissioner President Lance Wheeler and Commissioner Ben Salango. Commissioner Mark Slotnick joins us now in the Parmar Store Studio. Commissioner Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, So congratulations on the appointment. Thank you. Um, Let's talk about the process. Um, Commissioner Kent Carper, a a fixture and an icon in Kanawha County, resigns the post a couple days before the May primary. The story everyone knows, the allegations and controversies surrounding Mr. Carper. No need to rehash that. Uh, He resigns, but still on the ballot because it was too late to take him off. He then loses in the primary to former Secretary of State Natalie Tennant. She'll move on to face former uh, State Senator Chris Walters in the November general. Uh, But Mr. Carper's term isn't over until January of next year. Someone had had to take his place. And they had to be from the correct magisterial district and had to be a Democrat, as that was the party of Mr. Carper. Uh, seven names uh, threw their uh, hat into the proverbial ring, the ones that were that were qualified. As I said, they had to be the same party and they had to live in the right magisterial district. And they choose they chose you. So congratulations again. For those who may not know, give us the bio on Mark Slotnick. Um. So my, I came here actually in 1990. I say I'm, I always say I'm a citizen of West Virginia by choice. Okay. So I arrive on the scene here about 1990 as a law clerk. 
Uh, so where are you from originally? I'm originally from Miami, Florida. Okay. A uh, graduate of University of Miami undergrad as well as law school. Okay. And uh, so I come here to law clerk thanks to uh, Judge Bloom, actually. Judge Bloom is the original one that brought me into the county system. Enjoyed it a lot. Came back here. Moved here with my wife at that time. We got married after law school. And I ended up, I'm a real estate lawyer by trade right now. That's what I do. And um and also ended up working with the county commission as county attorney. I sub- first substituted in for the county attorney at that point, became acting county attorney, eventually became hired as county attorney. So I've been doing that since about 95 as a permanent county attorney. Uh, so I've been on the scene here in Kanawha County for a long time. I've gotten to meet a lot of people. I love Kanawha County. There's just nothing like being here and coming from Miami, coming from a big city to Charleston, which is – not quite as big as Miami, of course. A, a big city by West Virginia standards. By West Virginia standards. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it is not Miami. It is not Miami. There's no beaches here. Um, <laughs> but uh, but nevertheless, it's been a, it's just been a great ride here. I've had not, it's just an opportunity to meet people. It's an opportunity to meet you know you get to meet the mayors, you get to meet your senators. These are people that you get to know. And you know when you're in a, in Florida, you didn't get those opportunities. Right. Yeah. And uh, so the opportunity has been here. I've been just an integral part. I'm sort of behind the scenes. Most people know I sit in a little corner back in the commission <laughs> courtroom. Uh, I try to stay out of the camera, stay right, out of the limelight. Yeah. I just uh, assist the commission as best as I can, provide advice. And I've been doing it for a long time. I've worked in elections. Gosh, as I think I figured 32 elections mm-hmm, I've worked in. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just it's been great. And this is just another extension of what I do. I'll only be there for seven months, mm-hmm. and then I'll be stepping right back to that little corner I was in. Uh, but <laughs> go, it was an, go it was, back behind the curtain. Huh? Go back back behind the curtain. But I'm hoping that I can can do a, quite a bit while I'm there um, from a different perspective. Why did you want to be considered for the post? Why did you put your name in the hat? Uh, I'll be honest. It was for continuity for the county. I felt we just needed we need we didn't need to number one bring somebody else new in uh, for a seven month period and. Uh, and at the county, the commission uh, staff, I've worked with, obviously, for a very long time. I've worked with almost all the elected officials for a long time. It helped, felt that it would be stability for the county. You know, Commissioner Carpenter was, com- Commissioner Carper has been an integral part of the county for so long, and his resignation leaves a hole in the county at this point in time. And it was before we have a new commissioner in January. It just provides a little relaxation i should say they know they knew who a familiar face familiar yes. face in that room i want to talk about kent carper for a moment uh, regardless uh, mark of the way that his uh, political career came to uh, an end as i said in the setup for this interview he will be regarded overall as a great a great county commissioner um big shoes to fill for you sir absolutely he was and as i said thursday night he was the heart and soul of Kanawha county and you know no matter what people thought of him he was always trying to do the right thing for the citizens of Kanawha County. You know, whether we're, we're building buildings, we're enhancing the judicial annex, whatever we might be doing, he was always there to make sure we were doing what needed to be done. We might be doing water projects, working in the park system. You know, obviously, he's an integral part with our emergency services, making sure they had everything they needed. Um, and it's someone we can always rely on to do that. And yeah, I always looked on it admiration. Obviously, he comes in after I've actually been county attorney for a couple of years. And, um, <clears throat> and I was acting at that point in time. And as he wins his election, he uh, we talk and he says, "Mark, I'm just going to make you permanent. I'm not going to take you out of here. You've been here for a long a long time, and you bring a little history to the county. And, um, and we, we work together on a lot of projects. And it's I told him I've talked to him. I said I'm really going to miss him sitting there up there, miss talking to him. Uh, but he'll be around town, so we'll see. Him. Talking again to Mark Slotnick, who's the new uh, Kanawha County uh, Commissioner of Dave Allen Show and 580 Live, presented in part by Pinnacle Consultants. Whether you're replacing a roof, remodeling a kitchen, or replacing a bathroom, keep it safe, keep it legal. With Pinnacle Consultants, they can inspect your site, collect samples, perform lab analysis, and provide results within about a week. Testing all renovations for mold, asbestos, and lead is the law. Visit PinnacleCorp.net for Pinnacle Consultants, because what you don't know can hurt you. So, Mark, what do you hope to accomplish in your time as County Commissioner? The, the main thing is stability in the county. So, right. And I'm, and I'm going to be spending this week, actually, I'm going to be meeting with the elected officials. Again, I don't need to introduce myself to elected officials. Mm-hmm. They've known me for a long time, but I need to get their perspectives. I've not necessarily sat in their offices to see exactly what's going on behind the scenes in their offices. So I want that opportunity. Um, continue the projects that we're working on. We have, um, and as we mentioned, Thursday night, we are extending our uh, cartways at uh, Big Bend Golf Course, and we've agreed to extend the scope on that project. Uh, we're working working on the sports, the Capital Sports Center, that another project. We have a really big project that's getting ready to start, which is the Judicial Annex. True. Sure, and we have to, we've, we're adding judges and magistrates, and we have to expand that. Um, my thoughts are, I'm an economic development person. What I do as a living is I, I basically bring people here and bring them into houses, and I want to extend that and have that opportunity to take a look behind the scenes at economic development in, in West Virginia. My children, 
one of mine lives in Ohio, one's living now in Morgantown, and I want to ha- figure out how do we keep the children here? Cause that's a, it's a large loss. And I kind of look at that population numbers, especially in the city of Charleston, that's dropped 30,000 in, in 20 years, or probably 30, 40 years, and what happened, and get behind the scenes of that. And that's, that's the role I want to play, and maybe continue those projects as I go forward. So uh, it is, is it official now? I mean, were you sworn in last week at the meeting, or does that happen later? And when is your first meeting? I was sworn in last Thursday last night yeah. at the, about the beginning of the meeting, and I stepped right up there for the county commission meeting and immediately forgot to vote on the first vote. <laughs> Good. Yeah, d- knowing that, of course, <laughs> I always sat there quietly and wasn't allowed to talk. Um, but, yes, quickly. So my first meeting was actually last Thursday night, and we'll, of course, meet about every other week again, June 13th. It's been my life. Thursday nights. That's well, I mean, commi- yeah. Thursday nights is county commission night. Already so. on your calendar, so yeah. uh, so uh, you don't have to learn that. Uh, Mark, best of luck to you. Uh, you know, all three uh, county commissioners have a standing invitation to appear on this show uh, anytime. Uh, anytime you want to get something going on, you know, Salengo and, and Mr. Carper and and Commission President Wheeler. I just say, hey, just call me, text me, and we'll put you on the show. I appreciate you being here. Best of luck to you, man. Thanks a lot. Thank Congratulations you very much, Dave. again. It. it is nine eighteen with Dave Allen Show and Five Eighty Live, presented in part by General Hardware of Winfield and Milton and General. General Lumber of Winfield. For all projects, big and small, shop locally, visit GeneralHardwareWV.com. We're going to talk a little food. You a foodie, Mark? Because I'm, I'm a foodie. I know Salango I'm a, is. I'm a very particular foodie, and I'm very <laughs> difficult. Vegetarian, <laughs> okay. gluten-free. There's nothing like that. Uh, okay. Well, this is this next segment's probably not for you then, okay? <laughs> because our friends at Trojan Landing Marine have got a food truck that they're going to be opening oh, yeah. up on the river. We're going to talk to Heather from there when we come back a little bit later on. Matt Sutton, the chief of staff for the Goodwin Administration, is here. And former Mayor Danny Jones is going to join us to uh, talk about the legacy of John Hutchinson, the former mayor who passed away a couple days ago. We'll talk to him about that, but your calls and texts are welcome too. We're back after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses want to thank you for supporting local small businesses. Hi, I'm David McCormick, owner of Omega Commercial Interiors. Did you know that most office furniture originates in China and Mexico? Omega Commercial Interior sells products made in America for businesses made in America. If you're in the market for quality office furniture, remember, buy local and call Omega Commercial Interiors in Morgantown and Charleston. We're a proud West Virginia company. Welcome to Pucka Valley, where we've been in business since 1908. Today, we serve Roan, Kanawha, Putnam, and surrounding counties. We believe you deserve banking that provides friendly customer service. For all of your financial needs, stop by one of our eight convenient locations. Call us at 844-782-2651 or visit us online at polkavalleybank.com. Polka Valley, where relationships matter. Member FDIC. It's the season. Hey, it's Sydney, and it's time to conquer the road with the all-new Thornhill CDJR on the Thornhill Motor Mile. Get ready to experience the power of the new 2024 Ram 1500 like never before. With up to an incredible 4500 retail customer cash on select Bighorn. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Cruise over to Thornhill CDJR or roll on down to US 119 in Logan today. Seize the moment and discover why Thornhill CDJR is your ultimate destination for unbeatable deals on the road to total savings. This is qualified through Chrysler Capital C Thornhill for all details. It is 920. Dave Allen Show and 580 Live brought to you part by Live Healthy West Virginia presented by WVU Medicine. Live Healthy tackles pressing health issues, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, RSV, and more. It's a podcast offering insights into medical breakthroughs and preventative care featuring WVU Medicine's expert physicians aimed at fostering healthier lifestyles that are beyond the state. It's a valuable resource for all. Discover the latest episodes on WVMetroNews.com and the podcast menu. Start your journey towards better health today. Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline 304 345 at 58 Fruit Pharmacy text 304-935-5008. Chief of Staff for the Goodwin Administration, Matt Sutton, is going to join us a little bit later on. Also, former Mayor Danny Jones is going to stop by to talk about the legacy of another former mayor, John Hutchinson, who just passed away a couple of days ago. Hoppy coming up at 10.06 with Talk Line. Chris Miller, unsuccessful candidate for governor, will be joining Hoppy today. Also, Jared Halpern of Fox News on the Hunter Biden trial, which gets underway today. And you know we've been waiting on this. Senator Joe May. Now, independent 
party member Joe Manchin. He's the subject of the Hoppy's commentary this morning. He's going to join Hoppy on the show this morning. Plus, uh, June is Pride Month across America. Chris Gosselis of Rainbow Pride will join Hoppy as well as your calls and text. It'll be interesting, uh, and I'll be listening with great interest to hear the Joe Manchin interview. Hoppy coming up at 10.06 from the Encove Insurance Building in the Dale Miller Building in Morgantown. And a quick word about this week. I'm going to be away from the studio two days this week, tending to business elsewhere. Dale Cooper will be in for me both Wednesday and Thursday this week. I will return to the Parmar Store Studio on Friday. You know I love to talk food. And we have a new food truck here in the area. This one's a little bit unconventional. Heather Hardman is with us now from Trojan Landy Marine. She joins us to talk about Heather, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Tell us about this food truck. So uh, we bought a food truck. Um, we meaning? <laughs> Trojan Landing Marine. Okay, all right. So um, ideally, the, the concept behind it is that when you're out boating on the river, there are not a lot of places to be able to stop with your boat and pull off and get something to eat the levee is always busy it's hard to get into it and then there aren't a whole lot of other restaurants so uh, we purchased a food truck um, and we're setting up at our marina all boaters are welcome to pull up dock bring your kids bring your dogs we've got a great variety of food and we're going to be there you know weekends and before live on the levee and just trying to hit all those busy times whenever people are on the river and want something to snack on. Where did you get, come up with this idea? Has this been done in other other areas you've seen? or what? In the past few years, we've allowed other food trucks to come down mm-hmm. and set up. And uh, we've had some that were slightly successful, um, but it was always a trouble finding somebody who would kind of be consistent with the time down there. And so we decided the best way to make sure that it was, um, you know, a regular thing that people could rely on to be there, weather permitting, um, was for us to do it ourselves. I mean, everybody else is making money. Why not you? <laughs> Why not? So um, you saw a need here and you just yep. kind of uh, attacked it. Now, have you st- have you actually started it yet? Yeah, we started Memorial Weekend. Okay. Um, right. And then we ran through all last week. We actually are setting up in our parking lot up by our showroom for lunch during the week as well. So even if you're not a boater on the rest of the week, except for Wednesdays, we're going to be closed Wednesdays. Um, you can swing by between 11 and 2 and pick up some lunch. Okay, or- so this is not just while well, live on the Levy's going on. I mean, you guys are going to be open pretty nope. much. No, we're, we're doing full service. So we'll um, service the marina on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, and then we'll service the rest uh, during the week. Now, do you plan to take off during the during the winter months? I mean, when you are not don't have people on the road, have you, have you gotten that far yet? Have you- we probably will. We'll probably shut down um, after Labor Day. Uh, we may extend into a little bit after that, just depending on weather. That's okay. Our whole business is All dependent right. on weather. Well, the important thing that I want to know is is about the food. So what do you got? We got um, kind of typical bar food-ish. Um, we've got hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries, chicken tenders, um, you know, basically anything that you want to pick up with your hands and go eat. But um, what we've tried to do is elevate everything a bit. Um, almost everything's homemade. So all of our sauces, we've got a really good Nashville hot chicken sandwich. I actually saw something right online now. about that. I'm a big fan of the Nashville hot chicken. Well, our Nashville hot chicken, our sauces homemade, all of our sauces and dressings are I make the slaw from scratch every day. And all of our mac and cheese, everything like that is made from scratch. And so I tried to did a lot of research and we did a lot of trials to make sure that all of our recipes were spot on and and really good. What seems to have been the the biggest hit so far in the first month or so? Um, so the Nashville hot chicken sandwich has been <laughs> super popular. That's we also, a signature dish. Uh, and we also have the one called the Canal Monster, which is like our fries, which are like a seasoned fry and then homemade mac and cheese. And then we take the Nashville hot chicken tenders and we chop it up and put it on top of that. And then we do our homemade ranch and our signature boat sauce, which is like a creamy kind of Creole sauce, mm-hmm. Cajun sauce um, on top of it. And I'd say, I, no lie, it probably weighs like four pounds. Really? Yeah, a food in one box. And it is so good. I've got former uh, Mayor Danny Jones coming up in the next segment who, you know, restaurateur extraordinaire. And he's just kind of, sounds pretty good, does it not, does it not Danny? It does. <laughs> Dan, Dan, Danny's all excited. Anybody, anybody, but, anybody but me, thank you. Anybody? <laughs> Danny's just happy he's not behind the counter anymore. We're going to get Danny back. But here's what, here's an idea. Bring Danny now. Danny, come do some barbecue for us. You mean down there? <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Give me some meat and I'll make you some. 
All right, there you go. See, <laughs> Net- networking, Heather, mm-hmm. that's what it's all about. Yep. Is there a place uh, you have like a menu or anything online or your hours or is it on the Trojan Landing site or what do you got? Um, or- on our Trojan Landing Facebook page, um, you can find our menu. Um, we are changing out a few things here this week just because we've uh, want to add a couple, couple new things sure, to our yeah. menu. You listen to what like the that. people had to say too, what they're asking yep. for. And um, so hours and um, if for some reason we're closed, like yesterday we were closed because of the weather, um, mm-hmm. but all of our hours and our openings and our menu and our specials will all be on the Trojan Landing Facebook page. All right. well, we're looking forward to it. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having us. Um, and so uh, the, what are the hours again? Um, we're going to do 4 to 7 on Friday evenings at the marina, 11 to 7 on Saturdays, noon to 4 on Sundays. And then in our showroom parking lot, we're doing Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, 11 to 2. All right. Well, Heather, best of luck to you and the family. Thank and who's, you. who do you have with you over here? I've got my adorable little kiddo, Tristan. Hey, Tristan. How you doing, man? Good. Yeah. Do you want to go on the air with mom? You want to go? <laughs> he's, he's tired. What are you working this kid to death over here? It, it's there are child labor laws in this. Day. Is that what it is? Uh, now that it's summertime, he's uh, staying up a little uh, bit later than gotcha. he maybe should. And I, I woke him up pretty early this morning. <laughs> but he's a big fan of the food truck. Like he's my biggest critic. He's the one who's well, like, okay, our boat sauce. This is good. This chicken tender is really good. This you this know, needs some work. This or needs some work. So he's tried pretty much everything and yeah. given me all of the best feedback. It's always good. Yep. It's always good to be able to have a critic. Heather, I appreciate you being here. We'll uh, we'll be visiting soon. Well, Thanks thank a lot. You. Come by and see me. Oh, absolutely. You had me at Nashville Hot Chicken. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Harbin is here. It's nine twenty eight. Ryan, we're not going to take the break. I think we're just going to go straight to, into Danny. Heather, thank you. Tristan, thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy your summer. Enjoy it. So, yeah, we're going to move Danny over here. Uh, and again, we got uh, Matt Sutton coming up a little bit later on. Matt, of course, is the chief of staff for the Goodwin uh, administration. He'll be coming up a little bit later on. The Dave Allen Show and 580 Live brought to you in part by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Ryan Nicholson is our producer today. Former Charleston Mayor Danny Jones. Danny, good morning. How are you? Good. I don't think she took me seriously. I said, bring me a couple of pork butts. Uh-huh. You know, some Boston butt shoulders. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure it happens. I'm not in her block. <laughs> if she doesn't want me to do it, I'll, you know, but if she wants me to, I'll do it for her. Um, before we get to the death of uh, former Mayor John Hutchinson, I want to get your thoughts, because I know you got them, on, uh, on Senator Joe Manchin uh, leaving the Democratic Party, becoming an independent. Well, I think he's leaving a door open to run for president. and uh, President and not governor or anything else? Uh, he would if he was going to run for governor he'd run as a democrat he'd you know steve would you know steve <laughs> you know he's he's really a good friend of mine mm-hmm, yeah and you it, served together didn't you in oh uh, yeah i'll tell you something if, if you want to vote for the most decent person that's ever run for that job vote for him but you know steve's mayor of huntington and uh i said are you going to you're going to stay there? Oh, yeah, I want to finish what I started. Okay, well, it's just different for me. I mean, I'd be up and up and down every day, nothing but governor. So we'll see what happens. But I really like Steve, and I, you couldn't ask for a better guy. Mm-hmm. His specialty when he was in the House was education. He's just an incredibly decent human being. So you think Joe may may run for president? I think so. You think so? I think so, because I don't know how many – how many ba- how many um, ballots lo- no labels is on? I don't know how many states. I think twelve. And if you could get him and somebody like John Huntsman, there's nobody in in the country more qualified to be president of the United States than John Huntsman. I don't care who it is. He is the he's the man. Former governor of Utah, former ambassador to China, speaks Mandarin Chinese. Mm-hmm. He's he's just first class. I want to get your uh, take on the uh, on the Trump verdict? I came down uh, late Thursday, and was there anything that you saw happen over the weekend? I know uh, former president in an interview on on Fox News. Is there anything that would make you want to add to any of the comments you said on the air a couple of days ago with Hoppy? I I thought he was going to be convicted. I don't think he had a fair shot there. I I don't care for the guy. I did a I don't know if you watched that thing I did in the middle of the night. It's on my Facebook page about four and a half minutes. And, you know, the case was a stretch. They've never done a case like that in New York before. And you don't start doing a cases like that by a former president of the United States because all it's going to do is divide the country even worse than it already is. And 
President Trump helps helps repair, perpetuate that. See, he can't stop his sidewalk sidebars. Mm-hmm. It was just a mistake. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a likable presentation of a human being. He's just, I mean, I looked at the jury looking at that say, who's he think he is? He's a defendant in court, in court here. And the prosecutor and the judge and everybody's saying, and then he, then they dismiss him for a week. So they go home and hear all that anti-Trump stuff in Manhattan or wherever they live. He he never had a shot in the New York jury. Hoppy said he did all oh, they do for Dyer, and then he had John Decker on. They backed him up. No, no, folks. And I'll give you one more. You want one sure, more? Sure, absolutely. They will not convict Hunter Biden in Delaware. Thank that you. Trial, very. That trial starts today, so you don't think he, we get a conviction on him? Nope. Yeah, not at all. So does Trump do jail time? Because most people say there's no, no way he does jail time. Not because, on this. Yeah. But it's pretty— But here's the interesting thing, Danny, that you said not on this, because most people, and I think you and I both said this on the show, most people thought the Stormy Daniels was the least of the cases. It is. That the big ones are still coming up, but yet he gets convicted on on the on all 34 counts. But that'll be overturned on, on appeal. Yeah. Those, those cases will be a turn. The serious one to me, most people say the slam dunk one is in Florida. But fl- in Florida, they're going to be at Port Lucy. Port Lucy is mega country. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. The, the jury could flip on him. He never had a shot at a fair jury in New York, and he won't in D.C. But to me, the D.C. case is the case. Now, he's got a four-count indictment. Two of them will be dismissed because I think the, the, uh, the, um, the Supreme Court is going to rule – that this business about impeding government operations, you know, Justice Gorsuch said, well, let me ask you, if somebody pulled a fire alarm to keep the House from going in session, and the the, 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 the Biden Justice Department's kind of hop, caught with their, you know, what in their hand, mm-hmm. uh, because they, uh, the, the answer, that that's very subjective. So all those cases, they might rule against that, and it might be a way for some of these defendants to mitigate their charges, because they don't they don't charge people for that. Mm-hmm. When uh, think pink when they interrupt a session of uh, of uh, of a um, committee, they don't uh, they don't prosecute anybody for that. They didn't. Pro- J- J- Jamal Bowman pay, paid a thousand dollar fine for for jerking that. That um, fire alarm. Yeah. Talking to former Mayor Danny Jones, the Dave Allen Show and 580 Live brought to you part by Hudson's Pizza. This month is your favorite Hudson's. Get a large 18 inch pepperoni pizza at any whole tenant sub, only twenty three ninety nine. I want to get to former Mayor John Hutchinson, Danny. Uh, I was not living in Charleston when he was mayor. I was you much younger, but I am certainly aware of his administration. Tell me about the first time you met John Hutchinson and your impressions of him. Well, he was, um, I first learned about him when I was, of all places, Vietnam. And my dad and I were sending tapes back and forth to each other that we could play and talk to each other. And, of course, we would talk a lot of politics. And I remember my dad sent me a tape back, said, first thing, there was a lot of corruption on the police department. And John kind of ran against it. And one of the guys he ran against was a, a guy named Dallas Bias, who'd been the police chief. But you had some corruption on the department. And he was a conservative Democrat. And my dad told me, he said, your mother and I are going to vote for John. I said, wow. I thought we didn't vote for Democrats. <laughs> but he said he's a conservative Democrat. And then I found out two years earlier he had voted for Senator Byrd mm-hmm. to be reelected. And um, so he voted for Democrats. And John was a, a good mayor. He was able to bring in the money. He had a good presentation, handsome guy. Uh, Barry, Barry, who was my cousin, um, was very attractive, and she had been married before. Like when I was nine years old, she got married to a guy named Andy Payne. Her 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 maiden name was Thomas. Her her she she is the mother, and Andy Payne was the father of Drew and Tommy Payne, who you may know. <laughs> and so then John married her, and they stayed married until Barry died, and now John's died, mm-hmm. and. But he was uh, he could be a bit brash, a bit confrontational, a bit negative. And he but don't you have to be all those things? Because the same thing, Danny, could be said about you. And don't you have to be those things to be mayor of the largest city in the uh, state? Yeah. Yeah. But not I. I don't feel like I got out of hand until my last term. And then I didn't want to, out of hand. <laughs> I didn't want to be there. Right. I mean, and but I thought my my first three terms, I was mm-hmm. OK. I mean, I would do poetry and stuff. The key is the thief. 
The user, the user fee is the key for police you can – no, for roads you can drive on and policemen you can see. And we won that by 75%. Right. And that's when people said, okay, he's got this thing locked up, so I have to stay there four more terms. But John was a, a good man. He, he had a temper. Uh, he ran for governor in 76 when he, when he was into his second term, and he came in probably last or – once to the last you had you had sprouse rockefeller you had ken heckler you had um, a couple others in there rockefeller won the thing Mm -hmm. and uh so john went back and there was never a good relationship between he and jay and in 1980 i mean in 72 he may have very well supported arch I mean, because he and Jay didn't he and Jay didn't like each other because Jay had dated Barry. Oh, <laughs> and uh, the she, things you learn when Danny's well, on the she, show. She, she, she <laughs> not not I'm not saying anything untoward. But right, I mean, yeah. He came here in '64, '65, and he dated a single. He dated some women, and I think Barry might have been one of mm-hmm. them. Barry was a good looking woman. Now mm-hmm. I'm telling you, and, is it true that that John Hutchinson hired you as a grave digger? Yes. He, um, I couldn't get a job, and I came home, and my feelings about where I should work were kind of like they were when I was in high school. I didn't, I hadn't stepped up yet, so I looked in the paper. There, they St. Francis needed an orderly. I was going to go apply for that. So then somebody called this down there. It could have been my uncle. Said you, you ought to give him a job. He's a veteran. He can't get a job. So they got me in through what's called CETA, the CETA program. And it wasn't permanent help, but I went up under the beautification umbrella, but I dug graves all that summer Mm -hmm. until the uh, garbage strike in 72, which shut the city down Mm -hmm. and was my first exposure to politics because I went to the raucous meeting that they had when Holly Brown and and all the folks, uh, they, they shut down the town. And John wasn't going to have it, and he fired a bunch of people and broke the strike, and and it was sad. It was sad to watch. But at that point, wh- what am I going to two dollars and forty cents an hour? No, no, no. I, I went to then I went to sell bottled water for Tyler Mountain. Yeah, and talk about the growth before we let you go, Danny. Talk about the growth of Charleston under Mayor Hutchinson. I mean, uh, I've here in the last couple of days, people have talked about the town center, and people have talked about uh, the, the, the 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 civic center, which is well, now the College of Mayor They called it back then in the early seventies because I used to make their lunches when I had number eight. They would have these meetings called Super Block, mm-hmm. and one guy that was came and guy can see his face. I can't think of his name. He's up in Clarksburg now, and they would I would feed him. Otis and I would fix their their lunch and call uh, you know their sandwiches and and salads and stuff like that and so they would have a meeting called Super Block. That's what it was called. And that's how primitive the thing was at that point. They hadn't even dug out the uh, the uh, the arrowheads out of the ground because they had to do an environmental thing, but they had pretty well bought all the property and it it upset it up upended a lot of people you know a lot of a lot of black folks that didn't well, like I mean it pretty much from what i know i mean just from reading and hearing people talk i mean it pretty much eliminated a neighborhood yeah and then then it it uh, when they did the interstate the same thing happened white man come white man's road through black man's property which is exactly what it was but the pro in their defense uh, those properties were all in trust and they, nobody was doing it. They were the, the properties would eventually fallen down. They weren't. They didn't own the properties. Right. They were renting them. Right. Give me thirty seconds on the, on the legacy of John Hutchinson. Where where does he rank as far as the mayors of Charleston? Like maybe he would be. Um, he would be. You know, very up there on the list. His problem was after he left, he he had a he was ambitious. Unlike me, I didn't want to step in. He he became a congressman in the short term. And then he got in this trouble where Barry went up there and got in the way of everything and said, "said if you're going to hire women, they got their face has to stop a clock." And there was a, a Conks was a uh, he had been his public safety director here and went with John up there and Conks and he fell out and then he spilled the whole beans about the and Taylor Jones had a cartoon of of some woman sitting on the bed with the club the clock spring coming out and. 
and um, and John lost the election, the big election, which he protested and went into the whole election denial mode, filed a lawsuit, sat in federal court forever, and the whole thing was just negative. And he never he never was able to do it again. But he was a good mayor. Former Mayor Danny Jones, I appreciate you being here, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, it's 19 minutes away from 10. We're going to bring in Chief of Staff Matt Sutton from the Goodwood Administration right after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. In the medical field, Generations is growing and looking to add on job trained physical therapy techs to our rehab team. To apply, visit one of our seven convenient locations or simply click on us at generationspt.com. Are you changing jobs or gearing up for retirement? Don't navigate your financial journey alone. At Fourth Avenue Financial, we specialize in guiding individuals through life's transitions. From optimizing your retirement savings to managing your investments, we're here to provide expert advice every step of the way. Schedule your free consultation with John Burdett and take control of your financial future today. FourthAvenueFinancial.com. Securities offered through Jenny B. Cole Financial Incorporated. Member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Jenny B. Cole Advisors Incorporated. Satisfy your cravings at First Place Cafe in Nitro. This week's 50-50 Friday. Indulge in mouth-watering hamburgers, flavorful hot dogs, and the legendary big crispy chicken sandwich. Their generous portions and full bar make for a complete dining experience. Visit their website to check out their full menu. Delight in the taste of excellence at First Place Cafe. Friday at 9 a.m. Go to WCHSnetwork.com and click the 50-50 Friday button to get 50% off gift certificates for First Place Cafe, courtesy of the WCHS family of networks. I'm Rocky Moselle with StarRegistry.com. Since we were children, we've been told to reach for the stars. It was great advice. Now it's a great gift. Name a star after someone. For $54 and a call to 800-282-3333 or visit StarRegistry.com, we will name a star after someone very special to you and send an incredible personalized gift. The new star name will be recorded in book form in the U.S. Copyright Office. Call the Star Registry, 800-282-3333 or visit StarRegistry.com for the hottest gift. Yeah, 9.43, phone call. So today's Allen Show and 580 Live, the service of Bigly Piggly Wiggly and Spring Street Texting Service provided by your hometown family, Pharmacy Fruit Pharmacy. Ryan Nichols is our producer today. Tech says, I don't think a fair jury is the best descriptor. I think favorable jury would be better. Uh, Tech says, Danny's sympathy is not for Trump, but rather for the way Trump conducts his business. Crush the pusher, gild the buyer. What self-serving brain rot. As a texter. Text says, Dave, when NBC's Kelly O'Donnell shouted to Biden, Donald Trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly. What's your response to that, sir? That pathetic little smirk Biden gave when he stopped and turned while leaving the room spoke volumes. Don't think for one second that this despicable Marxist marionette has nothing to do with any of these cases. Actions, body language, and facial expressions tell so much more than words ever Will. Tech says Martha Stewart did time. Love how Danny says he didn't have a fair shot. Heck, since when have Republicans played fair? We have a MAGA Supreme Court thanks to the GOP. Do the crime, do the time, and quit whining, says a texter. Texter says Danny didn't Trump and his lawyers pick their own jurors. I believe they did, so I don't get your point. How you doing, man? Wow, I'm thrilled. <laughs> Matt, Matt Sutton, <laughs> yeah, Chief so. of Staff for the Good One Administration. So let me uh, get a quick note about tomorrow's show. Democratic State Party Chair Mike Pushkin will be on uh, the show tomorrow. Should be an interesting to get his take on Trump and Mansion. Uh, State Auditor J.B. McCuskey, who won the Republican nomination for AG, uh, defeating State Senator Mike Stewart. Uh, he's going to be on the show tomorrow. Plus... Uh, Johnny Rutherford talking pickleball. That's all coming up on tomorrow's show. Chief of Staff for the Goodwin Administration, Matt Sutton, who I referred to as Matt Goodwin earlier. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know what that's Different, all about. Yeah. All right. So uh, your thoughts, though, on the passing of former Mayor John Hutchinson. I know the current mayor put out a statement uh, marking his passing over uh, over the weekend. Uh, your, yeah, your thoughts? It was, uh, you know, anytime we lose uh, somebody who gave their, their life to public service, uh, we always want to honor that. And Mayor Hutchinson you know, spent a lot of time during his, his mayorship um, working on the Coliseum Convention Center, working on economic development, and and working on our community centers. And that that will be the the legacy that he leaves here in Charleston. Uh, I, I unfortunately did not know Mayor Hutchinson. I wasn't around in that time, but um, but I've heard a lot of great things over him. Uh, was having breakfast over at the Smokehouse on, on Saturday, and a lot of folks were talking about him. And um, certainly, any impact that he had in the city of Charleston is still being felt because we still have people going to the Coliseum Convention Center, and we still have great community rec centers. So um, it's a good legacy to leave. City Council meets tonight, uh, Matt. Uh, some talks about uh, about guns 
in the city uh, or about changing some ordinances or at least taking a look at some of the ordinances about gun sales in the city. Talk about that. Well, I, I mean, I think it needs to be framed correctly. It's not really a talk about gun sales or, or guns themselves. It's actually a, just abiding to the state law. Um, the, okay. leg, the legislature changed the changed the law last year that were, that um, told municipalities that they were not allowed to treat uh, gun retail shops any different than any other retail shops in their zoning ordinances. Um, and we disagreed with that position. Uh, that's why the mayor, our city attorney, uh, our planning director, and the entire municipal league, as a matter of fact, were up at the legislature um, pushing against this and lobbying against this change and another change that exists as well that, that speed up the requirements of how fast the decision has to be made on application um, for a business uh, for a lot of different reasons. Number one is we should, you know, we, we should be able to govern our own cities, and we think we do a pretty good job of it, uh, and didn't feel that the legislature needed to change this. Every city is different, and creating a statewide rule is, is a little bit complicated with something like this um, when you look at, look at the, the variety of cities in the state of West Virginia. Um, but at the same time, they set the rules, and we have to follow them. So the, the real sort of policy decision or controversy of this occurred months ago up at the legislature, and now it's just simply a really just a technical cleanup for us to say that we're going to abide by the state law because if we don't um then we we open ourselves up to a lot of liability and the potential for our zoning ordinance altogether to be thrown out which meant it would be the wild west in terms of businesses being able to to occupy anywhere close to schools anything like that so we're really just adhering to state law it doesn't have to be something we like but they're in charge and we have to uh, we have to abide by that or face the legal consequences that come with it but Dave Allen Show and 589 brought to you part by Fresh Air. They'll change those heating and cooling unit air filters for your home, your retail or industrial business, restaurant, church, and they can also custom build filters for you. 24 hour emergency services available. Visit freshairfilters.us or call 304 440 1104 for fresh air because everyone deserves fresh air. Got text waiting on you, sir. That's, That's why you're here, right? That's right. That's good. Text says the PSC Fire Hydrant Study Group has been in the news lately, but the fire hydrant closest to Chilton Manor Apartments has been out of order for six months. Is the city doing anything to address this critical piece of infrastructure that serves the numerous residents that reside there? So we have been working with the our water company and our fire department on checking fire hydrants throughout the entire city. I know we've got folks listening to it, and I'll take a note on that exact one and, and go back and make sure we take a look today. I'm certain it's on our fire department's uh, list. But um, yeah, we've been working with the water company and fire department to, to identify um fire hydrants that our fire department believes need work on um and it's a process and it's slower than we would like but it has been a a good partnership and at least in terms of getting ones fixed that the fire department deems necessary uh for public safety so we'll make sure to take a look at that one for sure you know matt we're a couple of weeks removed from all the bikes being in charleston for the usa cycling pro road national championship i know the numbers are still being crunched but uh overall just the thoughts on behalf of the Goodwin uh, administration. We were absolutely thrilled. We, I mean, honestly, we had no idea what to expect. We hadn't done anything like this. weren't quite sure how it was going to work. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our, our our entire team within the city, with our public works crew and our street department and our police department, our fire department. This was a monumental effort. And even if you ask the folks from USA Cycling, they assumed that it was going to go not extremely well the first year because we'd never done it before and they were just they were floored with how much how professional our team was we knew it was going to be the case but they were really excited about it um my favorite story about it all was was one where you know one of our street department guys came and said well it took us longer to put those cones out than we would have liked but the usa cycling uh, head came over or later on and said man we really appreciate you all putting those cones out nobody's ever helped us do anything like that before and our guys were beating themselves up by how long it <laughs> took and they were just thrilled that somebody did it and by the way that took place at 5 a.m in the morning so i mean we had folks out there working hard and then just to see the crowds it was really exciting personally i never experienced the sport and really loved it and i think a lot of people feel that way uh, knowing now that we have the logistics down next year is going to be great but to see everybody you know downtown and i tell you what the place to be and i only got to spend a little bit of time up there i will spend more time up there next year's Warts Avenue uh, with many Leonard and Jim Harris, many up there slinging fish and Jim up there keeping crowd control. It was an extremely, I mean, the, and the bikers, that was one of their favorite places to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, that was really an exciting place to, to hang out and watch the races. And up South Hills, they had the shops and uh, the shops had the, their party on Sunday and it was really enjoyed it. I, I'm, I'm pumped for next year. I wish it was coming back a little bit sooner. We'll take a break, but, uh, <laughs> but it was just cause I didn't really know what to expect. And, and, and that yeah. sigh and that hold your horses came from all the city workers. Yes, just that's <laughs> pretty, yeah. We got the regatta coming up. And then, well, I want to talk <laughs> yeah. about some of the things cause it's going to be a busy couple of weeks yeah. and next month or so in Charleston, we're going to get to that after the break. Plus I got more text to get to. I do want to tell you this though. If you're ready to feel like you hit the jackpot, check out WV bargains, save up to 65% on items like party packages from Kitteroo's limousine service from Chandler's limousine, silver dollars from the coin man. Give 
gift certificates for Dunbar Furniture Mart, scooters from West Virginia Auto Sales, scholarships from the Boone County Truck Driving Academy, bows from Spring Hill Rod and Gun, bikes from Elk City Bike Shop, gift certificates to Eddie's Tire and Service, and more. It is live now and will run through the 7th. WVBargains.com is a WVRC Media promotion. We're back after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses care for your family. Bigly Piggly Wiggly on Spring Street has served three generations of shoppers since 1955 as the largest locally owned independent grocery store in the area. The Joseph family owners grew up here, so you know they're invested in the community. They provide the biggest variety of choice meats, the freshest produce, an in-house deli bakery, great wine selection, and more of your favorite brands. Every purchase gives you gasoline points so you can save at our pumps. Order online for pickup at BiglyPigglyWiggly.com. Bigly Piggly Wiggly on Spring Street. No one and beats the pig. Your Putnam County Assessor's Office is mandated to ensure your real estate is evaluated properly and fairly. This year, their field personnel will be in the Taze Valley, Curry, and Hurricane Districts to revisit homeowners. Plus, new construction in the county will be assessed. They will be in marked vehicles and will have photo ID and business cards. If you have any questions about this process, visit their website at PutnamCOAssessor.com. That's PutnamCOAssessor.com. According to USA Today, one in seven children in West Virginia face food insecurity issues. Hi, I'm Jason Quintrell, President and CEO of Union Mission Ministries. There are some obstacles our children face with access to food despite many feeding programs available. That is why Union Mission has partnered with some local middle schools to place food directly into the hands of children who need it. Help us remove those obstacles and help feed our kids. Visit unionmission.com to learn more. Everyone deserves a break. Get your midweek break with us at Working Women's Wednesday. Here's how it works. You decide you need a break and then make it happen. Starting at 5 p.m., show up for the party at the Red Carpet Lounge. I'll take care of the music and I'll even play your requests. I have the games and prizes, the good stuff, $50 gift cards, cupcakes, haircuts, and more. And the Red Carpet Lounge has your weekly appetizer and drink specials. Bring some of your friends for your midweek break with us 5 to 7 every Wednesday with Working Women's Wednesday at the Red Carpet Lounge. In the heart of West Virginia, there exists a profound force that goes beyond the realm of sports, transcending limitations and fostering a sense of belonging. Talking about Special Olympics, a remarkable initiative showcased in the latest episode of West Virginia Enriched in collaboration with Huntington stands as a testament to the power of determination, unity, and unwavering support. See a video highlighting the Special Olympics at Facebook.com slash 580 WCHS. So Dave Allen Show on 580 Live brought to you apart by your hometown baseball team, the Charleston Dirty Birds. Off night tonight for the birds who return to action back at home finally tomorrow night kicking off a series against York. Tomorrow night, $2 Tuesday, presented by Embassy Suites and Breeze Airways. Get $2 game tickets, $2 hot dogs, $2 sodas, and $2 popcorn, too. For tickets, promotion, schedules, Dirty Birds gear, and more, visit DirtyBirdsBaseball.com. Good one. Chief of Staff Matt Sutton is here on the show this morning. Text says, the city is quick to release economic figures for regatta, and one would think the same for the recent bicycling event, but why haven't they released the, e- uh, the economic impact for Multifest? Oh, we did. We did have the economic impact for Multifest last year. I don't remember what it was. The Charleston CVB does them all. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but Multifest did release that. They worked directly with the CVB and got those numbers, and they and they released it, and they did one for Festival, and I believe a couple of the concerts served the Coliseum Convention Center. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, and I'm, we're going to have Tim Brady on soon to talk about the economic impact of the bike thing, but that's not – I mean, you guys get figures, you know, okay, well, this was the economic impact. But when it comes to actually breaking it down, and I know because I'm on yeah. the CVB in Putnam County, that's kind of that's kind of the job of the CVB. Be, I mean, to give individual heads and beds uh, kind of kind of yeah. information that comes more from them, and then they then they report to you. That's right. Yeah, I mean, the regatta numbers come directly from CVB too, so it's, they're all come from the same place. Speaking of things going on, uh, as I said, uh, a couple of weeks uh, removed now from the Pro National Bike Championships, uh, we got regatta Home. coming up. We Home. got foam with the dome. Mm-hmm. We got festival. Mm-hmm. We got wine and jazz. I'm sweating over here. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> ah, it's amazing. I mean, I think this is you know this is probably the second, maybe third year. I'd say third year where you're really going to see sort of the spring and summertime in Charleston be the be the time in which people are out. They're in our community. Uh, a lot of visitors into our town, 
and it's it's just a really ex- exciting time of year. I think you know we we dipped our toe into a few events the first few years we were here, and then we had COVID, obviously, and then you know really came out of the gates with Regatta in twenty one, and and now it's just it's just been twenty two. Sorry, it's been um, our, our summers while extremely hectic, and you know the uh, it it works people very hard. It's just an amazing place of our part of our town, and it's really what's set us apart over the last couple of years, and will continue to be uh, into the future. Is this sort of entertainment? music art scene that goes in the, goes into our city throughout the throughout the entire summer and in basically into end october november but Dave Allen, Show and Five Any Live brought to you part by Bridge Valley. If you're interested in improving your company's IT workforce, you're going to want to know Bridge Valley offers custom tailored IT training to bridge the skills gap at Bridge Valley. You can train for little or no cost with a 50 50 salary match. They also supply skilled graduates and apprenticeships for your company. Visit bridgevalley.edu slash apprenticeships today for more information. Uh, so we had the news about a couple of restaurants that closed, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Chop House and Tidewater and, uh, uh, and, and a couple others. But what about the response to? And I'm gonna give them a free plug here. They don't advertise with us, but by God, they should. Yeah. Talking about uh, Sergio's. Uh, uh, those of us in Putnam <laughs> County have been preaching Sergio's oh, for some time. You know, because it's I, on Main Street in Hurricane. Uh, but, I keep uh, track of your Facebook page. It's all the good places <laughs> to eat in, there, in, in, in the valley. Um, no, it's amazing, and I think it was. It, it really is a. a as you said, you know, people will get on Facebook and they'll talk about the bad stuff. You don't see as much as, as much on the good stuff. But I've seen a lot on Sergio's, and I've been there. I we ate my wife and I ate there on um, Thursday, and it's it's delicious. And to your point, they they know what they're doing, right? They've they've opened restaurants before, they've run them, they know what they're doing, and they hit the ground running over mm-hmm. there. And everybody I've talked to that's been has, has been great. And uh, I still think they're waiting on their. ABC license, maybe they maybe, got it, yeah. uh, but they might be. But other than that, I mean, the food was phenomenal. The service, well, and, I, and I think it's a bigger. And, and the reason I want to bring that up, Matt, it really had nothing to do with the restaurant mm-hmm. per se. But I wanted to talk about that investment in the Elk City yeah. District. I mean, Sergio uh, is a uh, is is a very successful restaurant tour. As I said, he's got a place in Hurricane, he's got places in Nitro. He could have put that anywhere, but he chose specifically to put it in that part of town. Well, it's a great walking area in town, and I think that's the that's the key. There's a lot there's a lot of business over there. You're going to see legal aid move into the old Stats Hospital building here in a, in, a, in a you know next year or so. Uh, so you're going to have a lot more people, and it's a great walking area. I mean, to be honest, and not not to you know I hear for the mayor's office, but you know my wife owns a business that's located right across the street from Sergio. She was downtown for a long time, and it was great. And then she moved over there, and her foot traffic increased a bunch. I mean, it's a, it is a walking community over there, and that's what what makes it really nice is that people go in and they want to relax and have a and have a nice meal and that's really a great part and the more that we can do in this town to connect the west side the downtown to the clay center to the east end that's what it's all about and that's the overall vision and the goal and having somebody like sergio's there is is a big part of that goal uh, and not only that but the elk city bistro that's opened up and then the the newfound love um even though, man, they have the best hamburgers at Dancing Dog, but they, it's it's gotten crowded because they're so successful now. Um, but even even that has been uh, has been really helpful because you know when you see events like state high school basketball tournament or, or other things, you want people who want to park and walk, and that's walking distance. It's not it's not a hard walk, and I think that's important for our city. All right, real quick, I want to ask you about this. I had Councilman Chad Robinson on last week oh, talking boy. about the ongoing traffic yeah. issues in Kanawha City. Give me twenty seconds. Anything that you can say? Well, you, you know, Councilman Robinson and, and Councilman King have been on top of this along with the mayor. Since we get it, it is painful, but it, it will get finished. It, uh, we've talked to the contractors and they or the the project managers that they do expect it to be finished this year with some touch ups in the twenty twenty five. It will be better for Canal City in the end. And we've seen a lot of businesses. We've seen some close. We've seen a lot open in Canal City as well. And that I think is only going to continue to increase once we have the infrastructure in place um, that can really help them succeed. Good one, Administration Chief of Staff, Matt Sutton. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. No, I appreciate it. I'm glad because Chad told me you didn't want me on, so I'm glad, <laughs> glad to be back. Glad yeah, be I back. heard you were yeah, you were upset about that. You're always welcome on the show. Coming appreciate up on the, on the show tomorrow, State Democratic Party Chair Mike Pushkin will be here, Republican nominee for AG, J.B. McCuskey, and we're going to talk some pickleball with Johnny Rutherford. Hoppy coming up. Don't forget the Joe Manchin interview. That ought to be interesting. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have fun. 4.5 Cross Lanes on WVRC Media Station. We are proud to live here, too.